Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is CJ UFC Picks The Smoke Sesh, along with my co-host Gibbs. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to like the channel, and make sure to share the video. Make sure to tell everyone about CJ UFC Picks. Free bets, free picks, free underdogs, and free locks each and every single week right here on this channel, CJ UFC Picks. Make sure to go check out my dude, my co-host, Sports Fanatic Gibbs, and make sure to follow him as well. Tonight, we're breaking down UFC Fight Night, Craig, I mean, sorry, not Craig, Allen versus Curtis 2 rematch fight. Um, that's going to be a very solid fight, in my opinion, and I believe it's a short notice step up for Chris Curtis. What do you think about this car, bro? You're muted, bro. My fault. So yeah, so we uh, it's gonna be a good card, man. We've got a couple of debutants on the card, so um, had a lot of we definitely had a lot of stuff to watch. But as far as uh, you know, we got a lot of young talent, and it's gonna be good. Yes, sir. I can't wait. Um, I love I love Arnold Allen, bro. I mean Brandon Allen. I always get him confused. Brandon Thank Allen, you. bro. He's one of my favorite fighters. In the ufc i've always liked him since his debut um we're not gonna do a recap we're dropping the show early we're dropping this card breakdown early you already know we're working early for you all so make sure to drop a sub make sure to drop a like and comment on the video help us out it's free and it only takes two seconds guys so make sure to subscribe all right let's share the screen real quick so we can get breaking down this card And there it is, folks. The first fight of the night. Let's get right to it. Scheduled in the women's bantamweight division, we got Melissa Tanya Mullins versus Nora Cornell. Melissa Tanya Mullins. She's undefeated at 6-0, 32 years old, 5'7", 68-inch reach. Nora Cornell, she is 7-1, 34 years old. 5'7", 67 inch reach, and this fight right here is going to be a very close, very solid fight in the women's division for the women's bantamweight division. Melissa Tanya Mullins, um, she won her last fight against Arena Alexeva, and Nora Cornell won her last fight against Jocelyn Edwards. This fight is going to be close, like I said. I'm looking to bet the over 2.5 because I don't bet women's MMA very often. And this is not going to be any different. I'm going with the undefeated fighter. I'm going with Melissa Tanya Mullins to win a very close decision fight. No bets for me, though. Only the over 2.5 if the line is good enough. What do you think about this fight, bro? Yeah, so um, I think this line's kind of off. Um, I am rolling with Mullins as well. Um, I think um, minus 265 for her is um, a little steep, but um, it's justifiable if we're going to go ahead and dive into Nora Cornell because Nora Cornell, she's kind of stiff on the feet. Um, she looked good against Jocelyn Edwards, but, um, you know, I thought Jocelyn Edwards did enough. Um, like bro alluded to, it's going to be a close fight, but um, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. I just feel like uh, Melissa Tanyan, uh, Tyler Mullen, she's going to come in. And she's going to be winning a minute. She has the better pressure. Um, she likes to be able to, you know, dictate where the fight goes. And um, I think uh, Nora Cornell, she's going to struggle with that in this fight. So, yeah, you know, for the first fight of the night, usually they're trying to start off with violence. And, you know, this order could be any order at this moment. But I, I think Melissa uh, Tyen is going to definitely get it done. And um, it's going to probably be a decision. So uh, first fight, I'm going Melissa Mullins. Um, so next up. We got Dylan Budka versus Caesar Almeida. And um, <laughs> this fight's actually pretty good. You got two guys making a UFC debut in the middleweight division. Um, we got Budka. We got a, he's a wrestler. Um, he's coming in, and um, he's, he definitely is trying to make his way in here. Um, he had a good unanimous decision versus uh, Chad Ham come uh, on uh, Dan and Wise contender series. Um, you know, he was getting pieced up a little bit, and um, – and, and in this matchup, man, you're going against a kickboxer, Cesar Almeida. This guy, he got um, into a nice war with um, 
Alex Pajeda. And um, he was holding his own in that fight. Um, I thought he was looking good. Um, Cesar Almeida is coming in 36 years old, um, 4-0 in his career. That's kind of like, eh, you know, he is old. But this dude's hands, like, if you guys went back and watched tape on him, he's super good. He's uh, silky on the feet. Um, he walks his opponents down. And um, and I think that he's going to walk Budka down, and he's going to end up finding a mark on him because um, Cesar Almeida – um which knockout was it so i went back and watched his knockout versus um danello souza and he walked souza down and just it was one one punch and one punch ko so you know i think Souza almeida he's shown in the past in his tape and kickboxing he has good kicks and he's just, i think his pressure is going to get him over the top here so i'm going Cesar almeida to win his ufc debut um, and I'm gonna give you guys the odds. The odds, he's actually a plus 100 right now, so you can get Caesar Almeida at plus 100 and uh, but because of minus 128. But I'm rolling with the dog. What you think, of CJ? I'm gonna have to go the opposite way, brother. I think Dylan Budka can win this fight, he's got more experience, he's younger, and I think he's tougher, man. I think he's got what it takes. Caesar Armada ain't bad either. You can't sleep on this dude because he looks like a really good prospect. So I'm staying away from this fight, bro. I'm staying far, far away. I'm staying away from the props. I'm staying away from the money line. Just too unpredictable in my eyes. But from what I, what I researched, I think Dylan Budka can get this done and probably get it done in a boring decision. All right, guys. And make sure to light one up. Make sure to smoke with us right here on CJ UFC picks. It's a smoke sesh. I got some pink paint panther on deck. What you got today, bro? I got that yellow island over here. So I was like, shit. Sounds yellow like island. Me. Let's go. I never heard of that one. Next fight, guys. This is going to be a scrappy fight right here. Scheduled in the men's bantamweight division. We got Gene Matsumoto versus Dan Argueta. Gene Masamudo, he's 14 and 0, 24 years old, 5 foot 6, 68.5 inch reach. Dan Argueta, he's 9 and 1, 30 years old, 5 foot 7, 68 inch reach. And like I said, this is going to be a good scrappy fight on the prelims. I believe Gene Masamudo is making his UFC debut. Yes, coming off the contender series. And Dan Argueta, he's been in the UFC for a little bit now, but his last two fights were. A no contest, premature stoppage, and I think that he popped uh, steroids or something like that, right? For his last fight. So Miles Johns had to rent a ball in the system, so he actually lost the unanimous decision, but it's a no contest now. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so his last win was against Nick Aguri a year ago, and Nick Aguri ain't that good in my opinion. I mean, Dana Gueta is tough. He's got knockout power and. Decent wrestling, but Gene Masamudo, 24 years old, undefeated prospect coming out of Brazil. We know those Brazilians are tough. They're good at submissions, and this dude is a good prospect in my opinion. Give me Gene Masamudo to win. Not betting the fight, though. I might bet some props on this fight. I just got to look at the lines when the lines drop. What do you think about this fight? So what I think about this fight is this fight's pretty sketchy. Because, you know, um, going back and watching uh, Masamudo's career, um, you know, he's one of those guys, um, he's undefeated. So uh, I just feel like, you know, just I can tell he's undefeated. And what do I mean by that? You know, I can just tell that this is a guy who's, you know, it's like he's uh, holding on to something. And what he's holding on to is that, oh, man, these undefeated fighters, man, when they get when they're undefeated, they're not they're just not trying to take risk. And um, and he's gonna avoid all risk at all cost. And um, he's one could say he's just real smart, you know, he's real lethargic. Um, and he is good. He has um crispy hands. He has good footwork. Um, but I I could just absolutely see, and I am picking Masamudo, so let's make that clear. I'm gonna go with the debut time. But I don't know. There's there's absolutely a world where uh, Dan Argetta is getting his wrestling chops going and um. He's just wrestling uh, Gene to death because, I mean, we've seen that, um, you know, Dan Argetta is a guy who doesn't really spend moments on the feet unless he just gasses out like he did in the Miles Johns fight. Um, I'm going Masamudo 
but I just I'm I'm cautioning that I would probably not not parlay this kid because you know just sit back and watch this. You know, at the end of the day, we are all fans of the fight uh, of, the, of the fight game. So let's just you know let's just see how this kid does versus a wrestler because it was hard to find tape versus a wrestler. So Masamudo decision. That's where I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna slide over to the next fight and. Um, yeah, what we got next? Let's go. Oh, yeah. So we got Cynthia Calvillo versus Panera Rodriguez. And um, you know, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I didn't know Cynthia Calvillo was still fighting, man. Um, she's 0-5 in her last five. She's actually on a six-fight losing streak. And um, you know, never would I ever thought that Cynthia Calvillo would be on a six-fight losing streak because um, you know, she was, you know, she was doing what she had to do. Um she used to be good, but I think it was more like a confidence thing. She just lost her confidence, man. And, you know, there was a couple of fights in the, like, um, I thought she looked good versus, um, I thought she looked good versus Nina uh, Nina Nunes. It was a split. I thought she looked good versus uh, Lupita Gudinas. So, you know, I, I'm just like, damn, they, they've been really feeding this woman to the wolves. And this is not a favorable matchup here because you got Rodriguez. She wants to be on the feet. She wants to put her hands on you. And um, she can get to the ground too. Um, her, I would say her jujitsu defense and her wrestling defense is probably the worst of her game because we've seen Jillian Robinson take her down in the submitter. So, you know, she has a deficiency on the ground. But, um, you know, I, I think that this is a tailor made matchup for Panera Rodriguez. Like, you know, they're not putting these fights together for no reason. Every time there's an A side and a B side. And, they're, they're, they want the A side to win. In a best case scenario, it's going to be the A side winning every time. But, you know, there's just be times where the B side does win. And um, this is a fight where I have to go with the woman who's 2 0 as a favorite. She's come in, and that's that's Panera Rodriguez. She's a minus 220 here. And uh, Cynthia Calvillo, she's a 1 and 2 as a dog. And um, she's been a favorite in three out of those five losses that you guys see on the screen. So, you know, she's just been underperforming. And she doesn't perform good at that underdog tag. No confidence. I have to go Panera Rodriguez. What are you thinking, my boy? Piera Rodriguez all day, every day in this fight, guys. Come on. You can't bet a fighter who's been losing five, six fights in a row. That's not a good look at all. She's 36, almost 37 years old. Pretty old to be in this division. Um, Cynthia Calvillo, she's got nothing to offer, really. She's not UFC caliber, in my opinion. Piera Rodriguez, she's got decent striking, decent grappling. She's pretty tough. Um, I mean, look at it. Look at her picture. She looks like some she can whoop my ass. I, I bet she could. So, give me Piera Rodriguez. Might even better, bro. If that's my this. I know I told you guys that I don't bet women in my night, but in this spot, if she has a good number. Best believe I'm going to bet it. So give me Piero Rodriguez, and I'm going to go inside the distance. Okay. Next fight, guys. Scheduled in the men's bantamweight division, we got Ala Tang Heli versus Victor Hugo. These damn pop-ups on Tapology piss me off. Ala Tang Heli. 16 and 9, 32 years old, 5 foot 5, 66.5 inch reach. Victor Hugo, 24 and 4, 31 years old, 5 foot 7, 71 inch reach. I believe he's making his UFC debut. I'm talking about Victor Hugo coming off the contender series in a submission. And then Alateng Heli, you can call him a UFC veteran. He's been in the UFC for a little while now, and he's fought the tougher competition for sure. Um, but Victor Hugo is a savage, especially on the ground, man. 31 years old, so he's still on his prime. Coming out of Brazil, like I said, the Brazilians are tough. And there's a couple Brazilians on this card that they're trying to show off, bro. They're, they're trying to make him the next up-and-coming star. And Victor Hugo can be in that spot. So you already know who I'm picking in this fight. I'm picking Victor Hugo to win. He's number one in the bantamweight division in Brazil. That's a That's a really good number to have. Especially in Brazil. Brazil's like the MMA capital of the world right now. So give me Victor Hugo to win by submission. And I'm going to bet him, bro. I don't bet debutants very much, but I'm going to bet him. And I'm going to bet him by submission. Who you got in this fight? Yeah, man. I got to go Victor Hugo. Um, 
how he gets it done, that is that is it. I like that's the question here. That's really the fight here because this guy Victor Hugo, man, he can finish you in every way. He's um he's eight and two to the KO. He's nine and one to the submission, and he's seven and one to the decision. So he's a good minute winner. You know, and this is off paper. You know, I've watched almost his whole career now. And this is just, if you just, you know, if you're just a paper capper, which that's okay. Because, you know, there's people who are. Uh, um, this dude can win minutes and he can submit you. Um, he got his Dana White's contemporary contract off a of submission where he has submitted that one kid, Eduardo Torres. Um, yeah, man, Alatang, a guy who's uh, only been submitted one time in his career, but he's been submitted. Um you know, I think Victor Hugo is the better fighter on the feet because he has crispy hands. Um, I'll say powerful hands. I wouldn't say they're crispy if I'm being honest because he, he throws those big club meaty rights and lefts. So, you know, but most of the time he throws his big bombs because he's just trying to get to you. He wants to get in your face and get his hands on you. Um, and Victor Hugo here is just going to be dominating. Um, Alatang, the only way he wins this fight is if he gasses Victor Hugo out and We've only seen that a couple of times in his career, but I just don't think Alatan Haley at this point can sustain a 50. He can't. I just don't trust that he can put 15 hard minutes together, and I just don't. So I'm going Victor Hugo. I'm going TKO, um, but, you know, that is inside the distance. I almost made Victor Hugo my lock, but I can't make a debut person my lock because if he loses, I'll, I'll look stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a weird fight um, if he can't get him out of there uh, after the third round. But um, yeah, man. So if we're gonna slide to the next fight, we got Norman Dumont versus Jermaine Durandamy, and um, this is gonna be a good fight, folks. Um, you got Jermaine Durandamy. She's been she's been out, man, for almost um, I will say almost four years. Um, the last time we seen her. Was versus Juliana Pena, where she submitted her um, Juliana Pena, and she was having compulsions. It was kind of scary. I was like, "Whoa!" Seeing a former champ like that, but that's what Jermaine Durandamy did. She did that to the striker, striker slash grappler. So Jermaine Durandamy, she's known for her hands, and I was like, "Damn!" She came out showing striking. Um, if you guys were wondering why Jermaine Durandamy's been out, she uh, had a baby, um, and you know. She was having issues with, um, you know, getting her body back to inform. But, you know, she wanted to come back 100 percent. One could say she took a little bit too long because, you know, now she is 39 years old. But, you know, almost we're 40 look, years old, bro. Yeah, she's she's 39. She's 39 years old, almost 40 years old for sure. Um, if I'm being honest, though, if we go look at this fight from a vacuum, though. Jermaine Duranemi has Norma Dumont beat in every way of this fight. She's the better striker. She has the better cardio, and she's the better grappler. The only thing that Norma Dumont has on her side is size and youth. That's the only thing she has on her. Because, but we've seen Norma Dumont, man. She's not that good. We've seen her lose to Macy Chasson, and you know she didn't look that good versus Ch uh, uh, Chelsea Chandler. Like she was really, she was mid at best. I'm actually going to dog here in Jermaine Duran and me. I just feel like she's gonna be winning the moments. She, I don't know, bro. I she's gonna be winning. Know. She's gonna be winning the minutes. Hey, they got bet openly if you want to make a bet. But um, I, I just will. think that let's do it. I, I think she's gonna be looking better, man. That's just that's just how I feel. What are you thinking? Bro, coming off a four year layoff is pretty tough. Almost forty years old. This is gonna look slow and watched. Mm. Jermaine Duran and me. I don't think she's gonna look the same like, like she used to. Norman Dumont, she's been the more active fighter. She's been in there, you know, at least fighting two times a year. And I know during the enemy probably fought the tough competition, but I don't know, bro. I don't know. And I think she's coming up. She's coming up. Yeah. She's coming yeah. up to featherweight. So that's another red flag, bro. She's know. seven and um Jermaine Duranami, seven and two in the UFC. Her her two losses are to Amanda Nunes, which Amanda uh, um Jermaine Duranami was a minus one thirty five favorite of versus Amanda Nunes. So she's seven and two in the UFC. That was where she was her pride, though, bro. You know what I'm saying, bro? She she, she she's gonna look good. She's gonna she's gonna surprise some people, bro. That's why I ain't gonna cap you out. After the first round, I think she's gonna look slow and washed, and then Norma Dumas is gonna take over it and win this fight. This decision. I'm not betting that though. Staying away. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's move on up to the next fight. 
And this is going to be a fight between two veterans of the UFC scheduled in the men's welterweight division. We got Court McGee versus Alex Morono. Court McGee, he is 21 and 12, 39 years old, 5 foot 11, 75.5 inch reach. Alex Morono, 23 and 9, 33 years old, 5 foot 11, 72 inch reach. This is going to be a, a, a solid fight, and I think it's going to a decision. I don't think any of any of these guys are going to finish each other. They're pretty much been fighting everyone in their in the welterweight division. Cormagee has been around forever. Alex Morono has been around forever. Um, I think Cormagee probably fought the tougher competition, has more experience, but Alex Morono is going to be faster. Um, a little bit more powerful, probably better cardio. I think Cormagee has him in the wrestling and in the on the ground. But if Alex Morone can keep this on the feet and use his boxing and striking, I think he's going to win this fight by decision. And that's my pick. Who you got, bro? Yeah, so right now the odds are minus 360 for Alex Morono. And then you got Court McKee coming in as a plus 260 underdog. And um, by the by time they... Getting the uh, octagon, Alex Morono will be a minus seven hundred. Um, there's just no way where Court McGee wins this fight. Um, I literally can't find a path to victory for him because Alex Morono is a superb minute winner. Um, he got hands. He has powerful hands, man. People, um, I think people get in trouble and they get hurt with his hands because they don't respect them. Um, in the second round, Joaquin Buckley got clipped with a shot. Um, he got wobbled. So, and then after that, that's when Joaquin took over. So I think people, they, they don't have respect in Alex Morono because he does look soft. Like, if you look at his picture, you know, I wouldn't be scared of him. But then you, you fight him over. Like, oh, shit, this guy's kind of good. Yeah, man, I have to go. I'm not going to make it too hard because, I mean, I ain't going to lie. It's a minus 700 matchup in my mind. Alex Morono by TKO. We've seen we've seen Court McGee lose two times in a row, first round KO. So, yeah, that's my pick. Um, next up, we got we got Trevor Pete, Charlie Campbell, and this is actually the most exciting fight, in my opinion. This is the most exciting fight on the card to me. So you got Trevor Pete coming in, 9-1. You got Charlie Campbell coming in, 8-2, um, 29 years old for Trevor Pete, 28 years old for Charlie Campbell, um, six, 6 feet for uh, Campbell, 5-9 for Pete, and 2.5-inch uh, reach for Campbell at 72.5 to 70. So, um, you got Trevor Peak who came in. He looked he looked okay versus Muhammad Yaya. He was uh he gave us an energy conservative match, and he he got a decision win. That was his first decision win of his career. Um, but then we see him get kind of beat up, and we see him get really fucked up versus Chepe. Um, and we we'll see Chepe later uh, down this card, man. Um, Charlie Campbell. A guy who got, you know, he got a, a favorable matchup to, from the UFC with Alex Reyes, a guy who's coming off a big layoff. But he looked good. He got him a first-round knockout. Um, So, you know, I like Charlie Campbell. I think he's a nice kid. You know, I follow him on Instagram. You know, but we've seen him hurt, man. We've seen him hurt. And we got Trevor Pete coming in as, a, as an underdog, a plus-176 dog. And we've seen that Trevor Pete, he got that dog in him. Um, and I feel like, you know, Charlie Campbell, he has the he has the better hands. Um, he's not the more powerful fighter here. Um, here's what I'll say. I'm going Charlie Campbell. But um, if, if Trevor Pete finds a big shot on Charlie Campbell and puts him out, I would not be surprised at all. Like, I'll have no emotion. I won't be like, oh, I will be like, I knew that could happen. I'm going Charlie Campbell by decision, but um, this fight like, scares me. Likewise, bro, I'm going Charlie Campbell as well, and, and I'm gonna tell you why. Trevor Peak, he he's a wild dog. He's got that dog in him, bro. He he's he's hard to finish, but he's got no technique, bro. He throws wild hooks, wild meaty punches. Um, he just he's just crazy in there. He just goes at you, he keeps coming at you, he keeps moving forward. So that's what I like about Trevor Peak, tough bastard. But I think Charlie Campbell is the more polished and clean fighter, and that's why I'm picking him in this fight. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't think Trevor Peak is gonna win if he keeps that up. He needs to clean up that that style that he that has. But sometimes it works out for him, bro, because when he throws those wild hooks and if it connects. 
You're going to sleep. <laughs> Man. All right, let's go on up to the next fight, guys. Scheduled in the men's heavyweight division. We got Lukitz Brzezetsky versus Walter Walker. Lukitz Brzezetsky, he is eight and four, 31 years old, six foot four, 78 inch reach. Walter Walker, he's 11 and 0, coming out of Russia, 26 years old, six foot six, 81 inch reach. And I almost made this guy my lock of the cart, but once again, I can't make a debut guy my lock. I just can't because he's not proven yet in the UFC. Lucas Bretsky has fought the top of competition. Let's not get it twisted because he's, he's already been in the UFC, but he hasn't won one fight in the UFC yet. That's a damn shame. Walter Walker making his UFC debut, coming out of Russia, number 12. So that's pretty impressive because Russians are very good fighters usually very good fighters statistically in the UFC. So this guy can be something. This guy, this guy can be the next big thing. But I got to go about to Walker here. I think he's going to continue his momentum, continue his undefeated streak. Um, he's a much younger fighter than a much more dangerous fighter. I just can't bet a guy who hasn't won one fight yet, and he's on a three-fight losing streak. What do you got in this fight, dog? Yeah, um... This fight's kind of weird because um, Walter Walker, um, Johnny Walker's brother, I, it was kind of hard to find tape on this kid. Um, found a couple of fights from him. Um, and what I've been seeing, I'm not impressed with him, if I'm being honest. Um, I am picking him in this fight to win because, you know, there's nothing that I can, can tell you guys about Lucas Broske that, Broski, that I can be like, oh, yeah, you know what? That's what he's going to exploit on, on Walter Walker. Um the way you knock Walker out is uh, you have, it has to be a clean, fast striker, a Tom Aspinall-esque fighter. That's that should be the way you beat this guy because, you know, uh, shot for shot, power for power as a train robot. Sorry, guy, um, guys. But um, I feel like it's just going to be a fight where, you know, Walter Walker is just, you know, probably walking this kid down and probably gets a first-round knockout because uh, – you know, that's just what he's shown in his career. I did feel like Luskis, uh Broske, I, I, I felt like he beat Martin Budai, but I'm not a judge, and they didn't give it to him. So he's 0-3 in his career. He'll be 0-4 after this fight. Next up, we got Ignacio Bahamondes versus Christos Chagos. And um, this fight is actually pretty interesting because um, you got Ignacio Bahamondes. He's coming in as a, a minus 330 favorite. But, you know, if you guys follow up with Lons, man, he's not the best. He's not the best as that favorite, man. He's two and two as a favorite. But um, Christo Chagos, he's he's way worse as a dog, man. He's two and five as a dog, and he's lost his last two as a dog. So it's like, eh, you know, this is a guy who just, um, you know, he gave his neck to uh, Daniel Zell Huber in his last fight. And I was like, damn, man, I'm like you were, you were looking good prior to that. But you got a guy in Ignacio Bahamondes, man. He doesn't give you nothing. You have to take what you get from him. Um, and, you know, I feel like there's just too many worlds where Christos is just running into something. He's able to eat a big shot from the younger fighter. Um, yeah, so much damage. He's 6-7 or seven in the UFC. Um, you know, he's just been getting stopped, not left and right. I won't say he stopped left and right because – that was the first time he had been uh, stopped in two years. But he did get stopped from Armin Saryukian and Tiago Moises, a guy. I'm, I mean, he's good, but I'm not the highest on. You know, I saw y'all seen I pick Rich, <laughs> Mitch Ramirez to beat Tiago Moises. So I'm not that high on the guy. Um, I just I just think um, Ignacio Bahamondes is going to come in and probably knock Christos out. But as a two and two favorite, there's no way I could put my money on him. What you think, bro? I'm also going Ignacio Bahamondes because he's the younger, fresher fighter. And Christos Giagos, he's kind of washed, man. Um, he hasn't fought anyone of significance in the UFC. I think he's just there to collect the paycheck, to be honest. Um, Ignacio Bahamondes, he's going to have the height advantage and the reach advantage by far. Plus, he's younger. He's going to be faster and probably more powerful. So, Chris Giagos losing the last three out of his five fights. 
Not a good look. Give me the younger, fresher fighter, the young prospect, Ignacio Bahamandez. He might even get it done inside the distance, bro. I don't know. I'm thinking about better than that. By knockout, TKO, or submission. We'll see. We'll see. Next fight, guys. This is going to be a really good fight on the main card for UFC Fight Night. Allen versus Curtis. Morgan Chereri versus Chepe Mariscal in the men's featherweight division. Morgan Chereri, 19 and 9, 28 years old, 5 foot 8, 69 in treats. Chepe Mariscal, 15 and 6, 31 years old, 5 foot 7, 69 in treats. Both of these guys go at it. Both of these guys are very, very good dogs. I'm talking about junkyard dogs, especially Chepe Mariscal, the dude does not quit. The dude will fight for your money. Morgan Chereri, he's out of France, 28 years old, young prospect. He won his debut against Manolo Zucchini by knockout TKO body kicks. Um, but Chepe Mariscal, he keeps um, proving people wrong. He beat Trevor Peak and he beat Jack Jenkins. That was a good win right there. I'm going with the more experienced fighter. I'm going with the more dangerous fighter. I'm going with Chepe Mariscal, and damn sure I'm betting him too, bro. I'm betting Chepe Mariscal on this fight. He's more scrappier. He's more dangerous. He's got power in his hands, and like I said, he will fight for your money. He doesn't quit. Give me Chepe Mariscal. I don't even know if he's an underdog. Is he a dog in this fight? Yes, sir. Plus 118 dog. He's my fucking dog of the card. Let's go. Man. Let me go ahead and put this blizzy out real quick because uh, me and bro just lined up on a dog, man. <laughs> Here we go, man. So, you know, this dude, he's a, he's a he's a he's a French guy. So I've been hearing his name different. So I'm going to just call him Cherry. A. That's what I've been hearing. So Morgan Cherry a, minus 150 in this matchup. Um, you know, he's good. He has decent hands. Um, but something that really popped off on the on the paper for me is uh man he's really bad at winning minutes um he's a uh, five and eight is a uh, uh on a decision i'm like whoa and this fight's probably going decision so you got a guy in chepe man he don't give minutes up man he does not give minutes up to people um before jack jenkins got hurt i had chepe to beat jack jenkins up i, I was like bro before the injury you're gonna still lose and i cast a nice little hit on uh on chepe that night um, I, I ain't gonna lie. I did not have him to do that versus Trevor Peak. I'm not gonna even sit here and lie. So, you know, I just got on the Chepe train. But uh, like I said, I'm on that Chepe train. This dude's good, man. Kickboxer. Got them crispy hands. Like like bro alluded to, man. This dude's gonna fight for your money, man. Because dude, he's coming in the UFC uh, later than, you know, you would you would want. Um, Cherry A, this dude is coming in as the younger, fresher fighter uh, at 25, 25 to 31. Um, Chepe, um, he just had a birthday five months ago, so he's 31 years old. But uh, I got to go the more seasoned, grizzled veteran, man, and Chepe Mariscal to get it done by decision. I so, just uh, got him. I'm plus 118 on FanDuel. Tweets. That's cool. And I'll be putting that in, too, to be honest with you, um, because it's a good bet. Um, but next up. We got the cold main event of the evening, and that is Damon Jackson versus Aunt Alexander. Uh, excuse me, Alexander Hernandez. You know, and um, I will say this is a pretty good fight here, y'all. Um, so we got we got Mr. Alexander, the great eight, coming in fourteen and seven. Damon Jackson, twenty two six and one. Um, he's on a two fight losing streak. Um. 35 years old for Jackson, 31 years old for Alexander. Uh, 5'11 for Jackson, 5'9 for Hernandez. Um, and Hernandez have a one-inch reach advantage. So, you know, you got Damon Jackson. He's been at Fortis MMA for a little bit, and he's been looking good. Um, you know, I feel like he's been having not the best favorable match matchups like Dan Ige. We knew, we knew Dan Ige was going to get him 50K there. And Billy Q, you know, when Billy Q's not getting beat up and he's establishing his fight, He's, he got good takedown defense, so I won't hold that against him. Um, but, you know, Bill Algio, that Bill Algio loss versus uh, Hernandez, you know, he didn't look too good because, you know, it's like after that first round, 
You know, after he couldn't get that knockout, he was just a fish out of water. He was a fish in a bucket, man. He just didn't have no answer for Bill, Al Bill Algio's jab. Um, but he looked good versus an old Jim Miller, which I'm, I'm picking Jim Miller, UFC 300, spoiler alert. Um, you know, I thought Jim Miller, you know, he kind of gave up a little bit, just a little bit to Hernandez. I had Hernandez in that belt. I mean, I had Jim in that belt. So in this fight, y'all, this is a weird fight. But I have to go Alexander Hernandez, man. Um, I just feel like, you know, Damon Jackson doesn't do good once he gets punched in the face. And um, Alexander Hernandez, is that his base is wrestling. So I just feel like this is a fight where Hernandez is going to keep the fight standing and he's going to be the more comfortable fighter on the feet. And he's just going to be winning the moments. And I could see a knockout here for Hernandez because they didn't put this fight on the cold main for no reason. They see oil versus water, and they see somebody getting stopped in this fight. And I got Alexander Hernandez by TKO. What you got, CJ? This is a very, very extremely sketchy fight, guys. I'm staying far, far away from the money line. But just like my co-host Gibbs said, I think the under is the play. The under 2.5 is the play because both guys got knockout power. Damon Jackson got do have sneaky, sneaky KO power. Alexander Hernandez, when he shows up in shape and ready to go, the dude can be dangerous and he can knock you out as well. Alexander Hernandez, though, he is a wishy-washy fighter, so I can't put my money on a wishy-washy fighter. And Damon Jackson was on a nice little winning streak before going on a two-fight losing streak. So that's a wishy-washy fight, wishy fighter, too. So in general, this is a wishy-washy fight. Can't bet on it, but my pick is Alexander Hernandez. He's a younger, fresher fighter. And um, just not going to bet the fight. Money line. Under is the play. And the next fight, ladies and gentlemen, is the main event of the evening for UFC Fight Night Allen versus Curtis 2. This is a rematch fight. Um, and I believe Chris Curtis won their first fight, if I'm not mistaken. Cool oh, knockout. Before I do the breakdown, before I give you my pick, guys, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like the video. Make sure to share the video. Comment your picks who you got, who your underdog is, who your lock is. And this is going to be a very good fight, five rounds. And I don't think it's going to go all five rounds. This is another fight that's going to be under 4.5. Brendan Allen has been looking great. He's one of my favorite fighters in the UFC. Brendan Allen is 23 and 5, 28 years old, still very young, 6 foot 2, 75 inch reach. Chris Curtis, 31 and 10, has more experience, 36 years old, 5 foot 10, with a 75.5 inch reach. So he's going to have a slight reach advantage, while Brendan Allen's going to have a really nice height advantage. He's the younger, fresher fighter. He has been improving each and every single time he steps in the octagon. And I think he's a future champion, folks. And that's why he's my lock of the card. For UFC Fight Night, Allen versus Craig, too. I mean, Allen versus Curtis. I keep calling him Craig. I don't know why. But Curtis is going to lose his fight. They're, yes, he got um, he lost his last um, their last fight in their first fight. Curtis and Allen. I'm talking about Allen. He lost against Curtis, but that's not going to happen here. I promise you. He's going to bounce back from that, and he's going to continue his nice winning streak that he's having. And I'm betting him. Inside the distance, folks. Brendan Allen has been improving each and every single time. Chris Curtis does have pretty solid boxing. He's and he is very durable, folks. But he's almost 37 years old. He's had over 40 fights in his career. So that damage is gonna wear him eventually. And his last fight, he was getting rocked. He was getting pieced up. Give me Brendan Allen. Inside the distance, knockout, TKO, or submission. Who you got in this fight? Yeah, man. So I actually have to roll with Brendan Allen as well. So, you know, you got Brendan Allen. He's on a big win streak, six in which, you know, and um, he's been looking good. 
Um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight. Was that seven? No, six fights. Okay, I had to make sure. Um, and yeah, his the last time he had lost was to Chris Curtis. Um, it was a punches to knee stoppage. Um, which I actually bet action man. I couldn't believe it. Um, but I don't see Chris Curtis winning this fight, man. Um, I feel like Brendan Allen, a guy who has more tread on the tires, um, a guy who is uh hungry. That that that's really the the biggest thing in this uh, matchup is how hungry I think Brendan Allen is. Um, Brendan Allen, um, a guy who's just really been looking real good. He got Rock versus uh, Bruno Silva. Um, I was like, whoa, but he came back though, and um, this fight's a five rounder now. This isn't a three round fight. So in this fight, just Chris Curtis will um, just be a step behind because. Um, if you guys go back and watch the knockout uh, in Chris Curtis over Brendan Allen, Chris Curtis wasn't doing too hot. He had his jab going for him, but um, Brendan Allen was piecing him up. And um, it was kind of like a duplication of the Phil Hall's Chris Curtis knockout where he had, he instilled that same game plan and plotted for it and got the knockout. But that's not happening here this time. I got Brendan Allen finding a big shot probably in the second or third round. He's going to take Chris Curtis down, and he's going to submit him. So my official pick is Chris, uh, is uh, Brendan Allen by submission. And that's that's it for me, brother. Let's go. We're seeing eye to eye on the main event. I love it, bro. I love it. And that was the breakdown for UFC Fight Night. Allen versus Curtis, too. That's going to be a very solid card. 3 p.m. start time. I'm not going to watch this card, folks, because I'm going to be at Philadelphia at Russell mania watching cody rhodes finish the story against roman reigns let's freaking go <laughs> you mean you're gonna be watching uh, rhodes rhodes lose again ah! oh, don't, don't even say that don't even say that <laughs> but the next card the next card we're breaking down is this sunday folks we're gonna do another show this sunday and we're gonna drop ufc 300 one of the biggest pay-per-views in ufc history Extremely stacked card, and I believe the main event is um, Jamal Hill versus Alex Pajeda, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. That's the main event. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it here. here it it's is. right there. I got a surprise UFC for you on that 300, one. 300, folks. UFC 300. That's going to be good. I'm not missing that. Definitely not missing that pay-per-view, and you guys shouldn't either. I'm going to give you a early lean on the main event, folks. Give me a second. Let me just get this out of the way. Early lean, guys. Main event. Here. Power time. And still. <sighs> Early lean. Y'all see the goddamn glasses. Jamal Hill's going to knock Alex the fuck out. That's not an early lean. The tape's already done. I can't wait to talk about it on Sunday. And Coleman event, bro. Early lean. Early lean. I'm going non sound non. Early lean. Come on. Now sign down is the most underrated women's MMA fighter in the UFC. I'm going Whaley Zang, bro. And then for the BMF, early lean. Uh it's 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 Justin Gaethje all day. If you're a Max Holloway fan, stay away from that fight. Dog of the card, Max Holloway. Let's go, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. Let's go, bro. <laughs> that was the breakdown. That was the picks for UFC Fight Night. Allen versus Curtis, too. Make sure to check this um, out on Sunday for our UFC 300 breakdown. Thank you for all the loyal subscribers. We really appreciate it. Tell all your friends, your mommy, your daddy, your cousins, your brothers, your sisters about you, CJ, UFC picks. Make sure to check my dude out, Sports Fanatic Gibbs. Give him a sub. He knows what he's talking about. We're making money over here, but we give you free picks, free bets, free everything on this channel. So we appreciate it, and thanks for joining us once again. Have a great Easter, everyone. We'll be, we'll be back Sunday with another smoke sesh, so make sure to join in. Any last words, bro? Hey, man. Good show. Um, I, I'm pretty much, that's it for me, bro. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Take it easy, guys. Have a good night.